Second Assassin's Creed video in a row. Let's go. The controls in these games are perfect. Why do I say that? You could argue that about plenty of games. In 2007 when released, Assassin's Creed had a very different control scheme to a lot of other games at the time. People were not used to it, which is why I guess they simplified it over time. But in the first Assassin's Creed game up to Revelations, the end of the Ezio trilogy, the controls were based on what they call the puppeteering system, designed to have full control over your assassin from any direction. Let me give you a bit of context. This comes from the idea that in the Animus, a machine designed in the 70s I think by Abstergo, the leading pharmaceuticals company in the world, and also the front of the Templars going back thousands of years, Abstergo designed the Animus to dig into people's genetic memories using their DNA to explore the past. Desmond Miles, a bartender in New York, is captured by Abstergo and forced to relive his ancestor Altair Ibn Laahad's memories from the 11th century AD in order for them to retrieve the Apple of Eden in the modern day and use it for some very very nefarious purposes. So Desmond is forced into the Animus and this is where the control scheme comes from. Each face button corresponds to a specific action or part of the body. For example, triangle is your head, which when held activates eagle vision. Circle is your unarmed hand, which is used to gently push people to the side. Or in high profile, it's used to grab and throw. X is used to blend when in low profile. High profile allows you to free run using X. And when in combat, pressing X allows you to step. Each one of the face buttons changes inputs based on high or low profile, so you can precisely switch from any movement in the game to the next. Mastery over button discipline is key to this. Knowing when to let go of high profile to enter a jogging state to then comfortably descend a high platform and to not jump onto the street in a violent crash to the ground. In case this does happen though, Assassin's Creed controls have once again got your back. Whenever you're not holding onto anything and you're in the air, you can use your catch legibility to perform moves like quick descents and wall catches only officially introduced in AC Unity 7 years later. Everything is manual in the old Assassin's Creed games. If you want to wall catch, you're not just holding forward with high profile like in Unity. You're manually jumping, manually catching and manually jumping again to make it look slick and complete the free run sequence. I would say the main skill seeding in Unity is learning how you can bend the game to listen to you. The old games listen to you exactly. Your every input is taken into consideration and Altair moves accordingly. If your assassin messed up, you messed up. If he made the wrong jump and didn't catch ledge, you made the wrong jump and didn't catch the ledge. With room for error comes room for improvement. And Assassin's Creed teaches you immediately any mistake you made, it's because of you. And if you want to move efficiently with precision, it's going to take practice. And with practice comes muscle memory and instinctive reflex. This is the road to master the controls of the first Assassin's Creed game. It gets more simplified over the years, but if you want the true experience of learning to become a master assassin, definitely play the older games for control and for the story. Honestly, some of the best stories in all of media. I love it. Doesn't mean you will too though. And that's the thing, a lot of people don't want to put in the hours to master the control scheme. That's perfectly understandable. You have way more of a life than I do. Honestly, at first, when playing through AC2 for the first time, my first AC game I played, I couldn't get past that one part in the story when you have to do a mandatory side eject onto that beam. I had to google what to do there. That was the first time I discovered, wait, this game is more nuanced than I thought. Then I went back to the first one and got absolutely blown away by everything in that game. From the story, to Altair being the complete embodiment of an assassin with a pretty likeable arc as well. And then I went on to go play every preceding game following this story that I had missed out on in gaming. This video has gone a bit off topic but just like millions of other fans, I cannot overstate my love for this game franchise. From the story, world, movement and assassin fantasy, everything blends together so well in this beautiful pot. I was excited to play every single game going forward, not minding the repetitive structure at all. I was fucking hyped when playing AC Rogue, even though some things in that story don't make the most sense. Assassin's Creed Liberation was also a pretty good game. I really enjoyed that one and the character of Aveline de Grand Pre. See how I said it? <laughs> I love saying her name. I'm getting so off topic though. Quick video about why I love movement in Assassin's Creed. The control scheme to complement the story and actual simulation that's going on. I will never get over how much freedom it gives you. The room for error and in return, room for improvement. But thank you so much for watching, that's going to be it from me. Let me know what you think down below, let's get these discussions going. If you did enjoy but are part of this 98%, consider subscribing, it's free, it's quick. And by turning on the bell, you'll be notified every second day or every day when I upload. Again, thank you for watching, I appreciate your time. May the Father of Understanding guide us all. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.